Happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome in to the Graham Lincoln MacLean podcast. Of course, it's hump day. And <laughs> on hump day, we bring you a very special episode every week where we talk with a student athlete who, in our opinion, is playing in the biggest game of the week. We would say, Mac, that Clemson and Wake Forest, two undefeated teams, two top 25 teams, is the biggest game of the week. We can't wait for it, noon on Saturday. And so we decided to chat with a Clemson Tiger this week, Mac. Come on, KG, and who's it going to be? Our guy, KJ Henry. Why? He's from there. He's balling out. He's having a great season so far. Ten tackles, a sack, two and a half tackles for loss, a forced fumble, and I'm going to say this too, a forced interception. He hit Jeff Sims a little bit early, made him throw it short. That came up with a big pick for the Tiger defense. So KJ is balling right now. We had to get him on the podcast. He definitely is. He's a fifth-year senior. He's an old guy. We we talk about this. <laughs> Known for his big personality and his commitment to the Clemson program, he's a leader on this Clemson defense and is a native of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. His dad coached at Wake Forest. He even told us he grew up a little <laughs> bit of a Wake Forest fan, so I know he's excited for this game. Yeah, and I'm excited for this interview, guys. Let's get right to it. Let's talk to KJ. KJ Henry, my man, thank you so much for joining us today. Listen, the Tigers are three and zero. You're undefeated. You've got to be feeling good. Talk to me about your performance so far this season. Yeah, man. Hey, off to a better start than last year for sure. Uh, you know, got all, our goals, <laughs> got all our goals ahead of us. Um, just excited. You know, I feel like we just we're getting better each game. You know, far from where we want to be, um, but we're learning from our mistakes and, and we're really you know on an upward trend. So I, I couldn't be happier. You know, KJ, we were talking about this. I think Mac even brought it up on our last episode, just the difference between last year and this year when you start with a team like Georgia, and especially from an offensive standpoint. I mean, the defense played really well against Georgia last year, but the offense struggled versus this year where you start with some teams where, you know, you should win, your double-digit favorites, all that. What's been the difference there? Because you saw it firsthand last year and now this year. Yeah, um, I'd be a fool to think that, you know, your, your confidence definitely has to be built, you know, early in the year. Um, and that, and that, that was a, a deflator for the, for the confidence of our mm -hmm. offense and, and vice versa for the defense having such a good game. I definitely think that played into it. So I think that helps. That helps, you know, with the season that we're having. And as you can see, you know, from the last couple of games, offenses, you know, have some really good spurts, right, and defense as well. So like I said, it's just well, both sides are trying to put it together. Um, but definitely from that standpoint, definitely the offense is, is clicking on a really good cylinder right now. Right. And, and I think it just it, it goes to show you that, you know, timing is everything with sport. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, I mean, if, if that game confidence happens, is then, everything. Yeah, I mean, and, we and, all know that. Right, and and I'm saying if if Trevor is there and he's a third, fourth year starter, you're like, okay, let's roll. But when yeah. you have a first year guy going against you know that defense, one of the best of all time, and that was you know definitely shown in in the draft process, it, it can hurt you. But I want to. We're going to just change the whole rundown here because you bring it up, and I, I just want to ask about <laughs> this guy. DJ has been playing out of his mind. I mean, it, it has been. Very cool to see the develop, even game to game, the development, the confidence. That guy's taken off and running. His feet are very confident and quiet. His reads have been really good. Uh, and, and he's hitting guys when he needs to. I, I have been very impressed with what I've seen from him. Walk us through, I guess, what that process was like, because I can't even imagine what last year was like for him. And then even to start against Georgia Tech, and I was part of it. I was part of the problem. When you see the things that he had to deal with that first game and where he is now, just walk me through that growth and what you've seen as a teammate every day. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you guys know as former athletes, like no one expects more from you than yourself, right? And all that's mm -hmm. happening right now is, you know, he's just showing up with the expectations he's had for himself for a very long time. I mean, from an adversity standpoint, he's taught me so many lessons and all of our teammates so many lessons just how he dealt with last season. Um, because, like, the great leader he is, it wasn't all his fault, but he took it on the chin like it was. Right. Um, and yeah. then when there was any success, you know, he displayed it to his teammates. So um, he's just been a great job in that sense. Um, a kid just turned 21. I mean, he's, he's still a kid <laughs> at the end of the day, but um, he's done a great job. And then, like I said, the expectation-wise, he's just – he's balled out all off season, giving himself the confidence, um, you know, to really show out on the field. And, and now he's doing what he's expected to do. Um, and, and that's why it's kind of like for us, it's like, hey, this is the DJ we know and love, and let's keep him right. What well, what is the biggest difference? I mean, why why has have have those things happen where he is just he's playing so much more free? Is is there something that you notice off the field, on the field, in practice that 
you know, Saturdays are, are starting to get really easy for him. Yeah, I think the biggest difference is experience. Um, uh, until you're someone who's, like, kind of been through it and your, your first game yeah. you ever play shouldn't be the best game you ever played. Like, you know, for us, Georgia Tech, uh, these last three games are the worst games we play all season. You know, that's the same way it is as, a, as an individual. Like, he's just progressively trying to get better. And I think experience has everything to do with that. And that takes into play with the offensive line, really just the whole offense. I mean, pretty much everybody came back, you know, on that side of the ball. Um, and, and so they're getting all their timing down, um, really just meshing well. I, I think I'd seen a stat the other day that we already had our whole O-line play three games together, and that ties for last season as having just an effective <laughs> O-line group play three games together. Um, and so when you think about that, it, it's really like it's something that goes, you know, out the window, but it's, it's so big and crucial when it comes to just development and success of an offense. Well, KJ, you bring up the O-line. I mean, that's something that, you know, we all know had to improve from last year, but the biggest difference so far has been the continuity. Yeah. You just brought it up, the health, and they're actually getting to play together. So as a guy who goes up against this O-line all the time, what have you seen from them so far this season? Yeah, no, they've been, they've been exactly who they were, you know, in, in the offseason. Um, EMAC knows, like, who you train against is, is your standard, right? And you know, there's no way we get the credit we do as, as a defensive line um, without going against those guys. And Blake Miller, the freshman, makes me better every single day, you know, mm. and, and J-Mac and, and the whole crew. So, really, like you said, the continuity has been second to none, just really getting to see those guys um, work together because that's what O-line is. It's just one big unit, you know, trying to get a, a job done, a goal done. And um, they've been great. That's really been fun to see um, as much as it can from a defensive guy. It's been fun. Right, right. <laughs> that, that iron sharpens iron. Yeah. Man. I, I just I look at your defensive line. I look at some of the defensive lines I had to go against, and you know, you just don't have a choice but to get better. Because yeah. if you're not, you're going to get embarrassed every single day. And so I know those guys are super grateful for you. Not maybe not in the moment, like you said, but uh, at the end of the day, I, I think you guys certainly make them better. You bring up Blake. What have I guess? What what makes him special? How how did he possibly start as a true freshman? I think it's only been done a couple of other times. I know I had Mitch Hyatt when I was playing at left tackle. What I guess has separated him to where he's you know a trustworthy guy and, and really playing his best ball right now? Yeah, the 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 obvious answer is just how big and strong he is. Um, <laughs> kids benching like. 30 plus in the 225 coming through wow. the door. Jeez. I don't know oh what they got going on with them kids in Ohio, <laughs> but like, that wasn't me when I came in. So no. that, that's the obvious. Um, I think what, you know, what I have to give him credit for is just, you know, between the ears, you know, his mental his mindset, mm -hmm. you know, nothing's really happening too fast for him. Um, he makes a mistake. He's not, you know, dropping his head. He's just trying to correct yeah. him and get better. And, you know, for a freshman that comes in, anybody who's been through that freshman, that first year, that's very rare. Um, so that's a big testament to the, the football he came from um, and just the type of guy he is. Nothing's really just happening too fast. Yeah, He's not the perfect player he wants to be. None of us are. But like I said, he's just trying to get better each week. And, uh, you know, as a vet, I can definitely respect that. I can definitely respect mm -hmm. that. KJ, you guys, your, your defense, I would say, even your D-line has been through a lot lately. I mean, none of it compares to what your teammate Brian Brzee has gone through um, with, a, with a family tragedy is really no other way to put it. How have you guys rallied around him, and, and how has it affected you all, you know, at seeing your brother go through this kind of tragedy and this kind of pain? Yeah, I mean, I, you can't fake that. That's a real deal. Um, definitely a, this is a, a, a weird week, um, you know, not having him last week and, and really not even getting the discomfort of, um, obviously, the comfort of his family is what he's needed most. Um, but it was just, it was just, it felt a little off. There's no doubt about it. Um, mm. it. It was really nurturing just kind of to play a team with, Louisiana Tech with um, such great values and, and great respect. You know, I love what they did for Brian. And, yeah, it's, it's just been kind of down. Um, you know, we're trying to, I, I think, as a team and a D-line and defense, you know, Coach Sweeney said it best. Like, our job is to just bring him and his family as much joy as we can through this time. Yeah. You know, that was our goal and, you know, how we played Saturday. Um, and, that, and now it's just going to be, you know, the goal as we, you know, go forward. Um, you know, we're not – this isn't going to be – fair. it's going to be a lot of tears happening, you know, throughout the rest of the year. and um, It's going to be some hard times, and, you know, that's expected. Um, so now it's just all about doing, you know, what we can, to, um, you know, just to make them feel better, you know. And uh, it's, it's not just him, just definitely a lot of teammates who have been close to him. You know, Ryan uh, grew up with him on our offensive linemen. So it's tough. It's definitely yeah. something, you know, you don't prepare for. Um, and it's
Like sure. there's, there's no rule book on how to handle it. Um, so we're definitely taking it a, a day at a time for sure. I know that's massive for him, just being able to rely on his brothers and yeah. to lean on you guys for support. I, I know that means everything to him. And whenever he does <laughs> rejoin you guys, I know that'll be big. Um, just looking at your defense as a whole, man, some adversity that you guys have faced early this season with the injuries. It's kind of the, the tale of last year. You know, it's kind of lingering over a little bit. It doesn't sound like anything too major, but, you know, some guys missing some time. W- what has the message been from guys like yourself, the leaders, from from Coach Goodwin, from Coach Sweeney, you know, for this defense and, and playing through these injuries? Yeah, I mean, you kind of alluded to it. Um, just we're not the same team as last year. Uh, and I think last year when we got injured, it wasn't expected. And, and mentally it was, you know, degrading as far as, you know, how we attacked the week. Um, but now it's kind of one of those things where, number one, we're, we're really honing in um, on our training room and really just recovering stuff. So, honestly, the injuries that some of these guys are having, they could be much worse, you know, if we weren't focusing on those mm-hmm. things in the front end. Um, and then secondly, just a hey, next man up mentality um, and really understanding, like I said, learning from last year, having over 30 guys hurt um, or, or not able to play in a bowl game. It's like everybody has to be ready. Um, and that's that's what we focused on in the um, fall camp um, in the summer. You know, just if this situation arises again, um, the next man will be ready. We won't make the same yeah. play we did last year. And, you know, there were definitely some some things in this last game that we had to learn from, but I was very pleased from, you know, our freshmen, some of the younger guys in the back seven. Um, some big players yeah. up, but definitely yeah. very competitive um, and weren't really down on themselves. I was really pleased at how they played this past week. So uh, it, it shows that, you know, they've been taking, you know, to learn it from, you know, what we went through last year and, and just growing from it. You mentioned the young guys in the secondary. You called DJ a kid. Let's be honest, KJ, you're old. All right. We know this. You're a fifth year guy. But, you know, I think, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're not as old as us. I mean, you're not ancient like Mac and I, but you're not wrong. You're not pushing 30, 30 staring down at you like me and Mac. So don't worry about that. Um, But in the end, I think your, your journey at Clemson has been unique. You were a very highly rated recruit coming in. You asked to redshirt. Um, your freshman year. And then this year, I mean, you look at your numbers through three games, they're exceptional. You're having, it's hard to say a breakout season in three games, but you know, I mean, so far so good. So just tell us what your journey has been like. Is it anything like you expected it to be? Hell no, it ain't nothing like I expected. I I, I often like when I've, uh, as I've gotten older, um, I'll look, I'll look at like my freshman film. Um, to really just like remind myself what the journey's been like. Uh, I, I came right. here, you know, we spoke about Blake. I came here, I couldn't do 225 one time. So I don't know right. who's out here making these ESPN rankings, <laughs> but they was way off. But like, oh. I was not a top five player in the country. Um, there's no doubt about it, but uh, was just trying to develop and really just been trying to get better each each and every year. Um, and that's just kind of what I've been pushing to the guys here. Um, and really, you know, as this season started and like you said, you know, gotten off to a good start, I really haven't really had the, the most expectations more than really just um, holding myself accountable to the same mindset each day, uh, which is get better and get this team better um, and be the best version of myself. And, you know, I, I've seen, you know, in the past when I've committed to that, good things come off of it. Um, and so that's kind of just what I'm sticking with. But, yeah, there's, there was no uh, God. God poked at me a little bit on this one. I did not see mm. this coming out. Uh, as far as the journey, um, the natties, the championships, all that, uh, I was just here because, you know, it was close to home. Uh, I knew I was going to win some games, and I like Coach Sweeney. And uh, the, rest, <laughs> the rest has been fun. So I've enjoyed every second of it. Still having a great time, too. It, well, it, uh, it worked out okay. Yeah. It worked out okay. Sure. It's it's so cool to me, Keisha, that you say, you know, it wasn't the staff. It wasn't that people didn't believe in me. It was, look, I was ranked too high. Like, it, you looked inward and you yeah. reflected. A lot of guys don't do that. A lot of guys would say, I'm a five-star. Do you know who I am? I'm going to transfer. I'm going to go somewhere and I'm going to go somewhere where they'll play me. Did you ever, or play me more, did you ever think about transferring? How did, how was that process in your mind? Yeah, a hundred percent. Just um, coming off this last season, I was, that was a, a big discussion of mine. Um, uh, I'd say one, it comes, it all bends back to my father. Um, ever since I've grown up, anytime I've, you know, I think every athlete has it goes, you know, through those struggles of not playing or wanting yeah. to be, you know, more minutes, more time. The first thing they want to do, like you said, is blame it on someone else. My dad made it a standard very early that, 
he's not going to be the type of parent to come talk to the coach for me, none of this, none of that, until I have a conversation with the coach myself. And honestly, that's been the best thing for me. Even, you know, through my time here at Clemson, as, you, as the years have gone, I've um, got more and more playing time. And there definitely were those conversations with my coaches of, you know, what am I doing wrong? The hard ones, yeah. right? What am I doing wrong? What do I need to mm. do better? Um, and then just focusing on that. And that's kind of, you know, what's helped me get to where I am today. And, you know, as far as, you know, the transfer and whatnot, that, that, it just went against the grain of everything that I've um, – grown up to know, right, and I uh, finished where I started um, and really just give it all I got. And that's kind of what made it easier to, to come back this year, um, definitely having a great group around me and, and just want to finish where I started. I love, you know, the community, love, you know, my teammates, the coaches. And as much as, you know, I wanted to be the guy, um, you know, I, I really just want to be, you know, the guy from, from my guys and, um, mm. it's, it's been awesome. It's been, it's been awesome. Definitely some learning lessons that I'll be able to take, um, you know, for the rest of my life, but it's been fun. Well, I, I think it just speaks so much about that journey, man, and, and your commitment and dedication based on what you're doing this year. I mean, out there dominating and, and it's just, I don't know. It's so fulfilling when, when all the hard work, all the bad days, all the hard days turn into these great days that you keep stacking. I mean, our, our careers align very similarly. Yeah. And once you get your chance, you know, you, you go out there and you do your thing. And, and so, you know, with that, it, it's just, I don't know, man, when you put in the work, when you put in the grind and you can watch this thing grow and develop over time, it just, it means a lot to you and something that as you get continue to get older and down the road and you start getting farther and farther away. When from you get old like us, Clemson, KJ. Uh, you'll appreciate it a, a ton. So it's yeah. cool to hear your perspective on that and, and, and listen into that. KJ, can I you think, tell Can you tell Max about to be a father? He's so wise, isn't he? Look, he, he, he doesn't look a day over 25. That guy right here. My man. Oh, good. My oh, man. Good. That's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. Who wants to come play for us today? I mean, Hey, I can give you one or two snaps, but that's it. That's it. <laughs> you, you you talk about you know your coaching staff and and some of the you know discussions on on maybe why you did decide to to stay or or come back and and things of that nature. I think a big part of that you know was Coach Goodwin and, and the things that he you know expressed to you and in the vision for this defense that he has. You know, biggest thing I think that we would like to know, and that probably a lot of people would like to know, what have been the biggest differences between him and Coach Venables? Because I think Coach Venables is one of, if not the, the best to ever do it. And now you have a guy in West trying to fill in those big, uh, you know, shoes and, and doing a great job so far. But what are the what are some of the biggest differences just from an outsider's you know viewpoint? Yeah, um, I think T Bone. Uh, Tyler Venables put it in the best way. Like defense is defense. Um, it's kind of like a sandwich. You can get different types, but it's still gonna be a sandwich. Uh, and that's kind of what it is. Is Coach G is definitely one of the best to ever do it. Um, and Wes has just been great. You know, filling into that role. Um, I think the biggest difference is, um, in a way that I can explain for everyone, is Coach V is just like he's a mastermind of schemes, right? And I think he's going to, you know, no no matter who you really put out there, obviously guys have come through with great talent, but who he put out there is he can put you in different places um, and then just draw it up and, and you go be you and, and, and win your matchup. And I think a Wes, um, what I've, I've come to enjoy is, you know, he's like, hey, we recruited, you know, you five-star guys, whatever, whatever. You know, I'm going to put you in some of those similar, you know, um, some of those similar schemes, but go win, you know, go use your talents and just go win. Um, and he's really, you know, instilled a lot of confidence in us um, and really believes in, you know, what we are able to do on the field. So it's been cool to see, man. Um, definitely one of the reasons I stayed. I'd say one another reason is um, Coach Sweeney, you know, kind of alluded to it. Like, if I'm ready to, you know, take this thing to the next level, then I better be ready to compete. And uh, once he kind of put that in my mind, there's no better room to compete with yeah. than Miles mm -hmm. Murphy, Xavier Thomas, and mm -hmm. Justin Maskell. Um, and so I, once he kind of threw that in there, I was like, he's exactly right. And uh, it's made me so much better. Um, we get a lot of similar snaps as far as the numbers, which is really all that matters. Um, and, you know, we're just com competing and comparing and just trying to make each other better each and every week. So that's, made, that's been a big, a big reason, you know, for really the great start as well. Mm. All right, let's talk a little Wake Forest as mm. we are, you know, getting ready for this game. Two undefeated teams, two top 25 teams. 
and the game is in Winston-Salem. We'll talk about that because I know you're excited about that part, KJ. But just, <laughs> you know, when you look at Wake, this is a, a high-powered explosive offense. They're, that's what they want to do. They want to score. They want to score fast. They run that very unique style that Dave Clawson has kind of mastered there at Wake. Um, when you look at last year, I mean, you guys kind of dominated from a defensive standpoint. Can you take anything from that? Do you, yeah. do you see any parallels? What do you think? I mean, y'all talk about how old I am. I, I sat down and watched some of the film last night, and I probably stopped like 20 minutes in because I'm like, it's, just, it's the same team. It's the same team I've been playing for the last five years. They're going to do what they do and do it very well. Um, like you said, a high-tempo team. Coach Boston's like mastered the, the slow inside zone read and, you know, really mm-hmm. good in the linebackers, throwing it right behind you, just – um, they're they're good at what they do, and there's no there's no need to change it. Um, so yeah, it's really just trying to patch up the things that we had last year, and then trying to really understand some of the nuances they put in this season, and just put a new game plan together. Um, but you know, it's still football. You know, the game's still one in the trenches. Guys, got to make plays on the back end. You know, we got to get to get them to third and longs and, and get off the field. So um, as as much as I'd love to, you know, make it sound new and flashy, it's it's the same old way from Clemson, you know. And we just that's not, that's not, the outcome is the same. Um, that's definitely the sure. Goal. Um, but they definitely have, you know, the guys and, and the scheme to make plays and, and put points on the board. There's no doubt about it. Right. Yeah. No question. How much of a challenge does a guy like Sam Hartman provide? He, he's an older guy as well. He was very productive a year ago. Fifty plus touchdowns. You know, only been done two other times ever in this conference. And, I mean, he's basically a coach out there. The way yeah. he talks, the way he sees things. So what kind of challenge does a guy like that provide? Yeah. Now, first and foremost, just I'm glad to see he's back, glad to see he's healthy. Um, yeah. that, I was, that was great news to see. I um, was really praying for him and cheering for him, uh, for him to get back. But, yeah, I, I definitely can relate um, as far as, you know, being the older guy. So I can only imagine it being a quarterback, you know, how his <laughs> mind's working. Um, as far as, you know, the, what he's expecting, um, what, you know, what his reads are and, you know, the situational awareness, I know it's, it's been, it's been second and nine. And, and then when you put his ability to, you know, get out the pocket, and put the ball on the money, just extend plays. Um, that's what you want in your quarterback. So been a great competitor, great guy to compete against for the last couple of years. Um, and, you know, it, it's, he's always a challenge, you know, and, and I'm one who, kind of is used to like playing against them. So as you know, it's my job to really get these guys ready and understand how he wants to attack us. Mm-hmm. And and we know you're from Winston-Salem, KJ. You there played at Wake Forest let's, before. Let's, let's get to it. Let's get to it. That's right. <laughs> but the last time y'all played there, it was COVID. So there really wasn't, you couldn't do much. So how excited are you for this? I mean, I'm come on. I'm so excited. I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, we, uh, I got told all the guys in the locker room, like, give me your tickets. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I got, yep. I got half the city coming. Uh, we going. Man, let's go. It's a, it's a homecoming for me, so yeah, I'm just like <laughs> old guy. I'm not holding back, uh, so I'm so excited to get to see a lot of familiar faces come support me. Um, like you said, Dad coached the Wake Forest, so I get flashbacks all the time. Being six, seven years old, wearing a yellow wig, cheering on the Demon Deacons, like it's, just, <laughs> it's uh, it's something, it's something that you just had to live through. And uh, anytime I go back to Wake Forest, man. Uh, I just love it. I love it. That's awesome, man. That, that's super cool. How many tickets are you at? Or how many tickets, better yet, are you trying to get <laughs> oh, by the time Saturday gets here? Oh, we're going to get there. That's number one. Uh, <laughs> number two, I'm trying to get to about 30. Trying to get to about 30. Okay. Maybe, okay. Uh, have a good little crew there. So. What what's the uh what what's the yeah what's the scheme here are, are you are you giving some guys a little cash for them are you <laughs> promising anything or hey, is it man. just bully ball and you say hey bro I like send them my way by Tuesday I'm the nice guy I'm the nice guy but I'll roll up the sleeve on some of these young boys if I got to listen I'm an old guy <laughs> all right I've been telling them I really been it's really been a, a recruiting process early I've been telling them for weeks you know really since after Georgia Tech smart you play away for us. Just know I need them tickets. So it's really just more checking. That's right. Out. Like, <laughs> remember when we had that conversation? Uh, and then, you know, That's right. We were paying dividends. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it, man. All right. So so we'll wrap it up here. We'll get, we'll get you out of here. I know you got to go in three minutes, four minutes here. Clemson wins the game if they do what? Give me some keys to the game here. Yeah, if we control the line of scrimmage, um, you know, definitely not letting – 
Uh, the O-line knock is back. Uh, I think the back seven definitely has to make some plays, some one-on-one -on -one plays, because that's what their offense puts you in situationally. Um, as I alluded to, got to get off the field on third downs. Do we think we did a great job of that uh, last week. And then our offense just has to keep being our offense. I think they've been electric, been running the ball very well. Um, like you said, DJ has just been what I expect DJ to be and what he expects of himself. Yeah. So now it's just putting it, putting it together for four quarters. Uh, I mean, we're not just trying to win. We're trying to play, you know, dominant football. Um, and that's what we expect of ourselves. So not just kind of those flashes that I think, you know, we've all seen, just trying to put it together for four quarters. And no matter who goes in the game, um, you know, just keeping that level of consistency, uh, that's definitely the goal. Anytime we win in Winston, we get donuts. We get Krispy Kreme. <laughs> that's what happens. And uh, if there's not more motivation for the bigger boys, it's some donuts after the game. So, you know, there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot of stakes right here. The division and some. There you go. Freddie Donuts. There you go. It's all about the Krispy Kreme. I get it, man. Hey, thank you so much, man. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. Uh, good luck Saturday, man. Appreciate it. Thanks again to KJ Henry taking the time out of, I know, his very busy schedule, Mac. We all know how that goes to chat with us this week as we get ready for Clemson Wake Forest. Now, just an initial initial thoughts on this game. We will break it completely down on Friday, so make sure you tune back in for that episode. Clemson is a seven-point favorite as of now. We're recording this on Monday, okay? So it could have changed by Wednesday, but <laughs> seven is interesting. When you think of what happened last year when Clemson won 48-27, that was in Death Valley. I was looking up that game to remind myself the circumstances – Wake Forest was number 10 in the country in that game. Clemson nope. was unranked, and the Tigers just dominated from the jump. So what do you think about that seven-point spread, Mac? I, I'm with you. I think it's going to change dramatically. Um, you have history on your side. Clemson's playing better. Wake Forest just got held to 21 rushing yards against the G5 team. That yeah. line is going to move uh, a lot. So I'm glad we got it out there so everyone knows this is what it started as. Uh, but when I look at this matchup, it, it's still intriguing and, and maybe a little bit even more intriguing because of some injuries for the Tigers in the secondary. Uh, you, you've got one of the best wide receiver uh, uh, units here in the entire country. Right. Uh, a guy in A.T. Perry that's just licking his chops for these young cats, especially you know if these true freshmen have to play uh, for Clemson and – He's like, let's go, Sam, throw it up. Give me the rock. And and so I think, you know, initially you're looking at that Wake Forest offensive line. Can you protect? Do you max protect? Are you chipping those great defensive ends like KJ Henry there? And I think that's where you have a chance. Don't try to run the ball. You just couldn't run it against Liberty. You're not going to be able to run it against these Tigers. Let Sam create. And, you know, I think you have a real shot here. Yes, I think to say don't even try to run the ball concerns me. No, it's not. I'm not pushing back against Wake having a shot. Of course they do. But to say Wake just doesn't need to run the ball. Let me ask you a question. Is it better to but, be second and five or second and 14 because you tried to run the ball? I get that. But how many three and outs happen? And th this is kind of what happened last year. Three and outs happened. Clemson got out to a big lead, and then you feel sure. like you're out of the game because you can't sure. control the clock. And that's I hear you. when Wake has lost. I mean, that's been their issue when the run game can't get going. So I think you you can't just completely forget about it. Right. Um, you've got to be better than you were yeah. against Liberty. Like, there's no doubt about it. But I like what you're saying about Wake's wide receivers versus Clemson secondary. To me, that's a matchup that Wake can win if their O line can protect, if they can yeah. give Sam Harmon enough time. Right. Have you ever heard an offensive lineman scream to throw the ball more than me? I mean, it's the weirdest thing. It's it crazy. is odd. It's yeah. super strange. What did you prefer doing? Did you prefer to pass block or run block? Uh, yeah, pass block. I'm a future. I was a former tight end. Like, come on. I don't want to have to go but smash see, those guys. I thought you always told me it's easier to run block because it's easier to go forward. It is for guys that aren't athletes like me. I'm a oh, smooth operator, <laughs> move around, let those fat boys come at me. I'm good. Let's ride. Come on. Um, yeah, it's so much easier. It's so much easier. <laughs>
I, for me. Run blocking. Mac, I'm for so God. sorry okay, if I offended you. Yeah, you offended I, me. Come on. If I attacked your athleticism Just there, my apologies. Just always remember how the relationship started, KG. All right? Me flying through the air and slamming on somebody. Okay? It's true. Me throwing you alley-oops. <laughs> it's so true. Okay. Now, on the Clemson side of this thing, just really quickly before I get us out of here, uh, you know, you got to be careful with turnovers because Wake Forest, mm. they get after it, and, and they create those turnovers. They're, they're going to try to force you into to some yeah. bad positions there. We'll be interesting just to see their game plan. And, you know, the growth that we've seen from DJ was was great to see that insight and hear that insight from KJ. I thought that was a really cool thing there to, to just see the growth and the, you know, constant belief in, in his self and his teammate and, you know, just seeing those things necessary there. Clemson's running the ball very effectively right now. Will Shipley has put on a show in, in every opportunity that he gets over 11 yards per carry from a, mm-hmm. a week ago. So, it's going to be fun. This is going to be a great game. I expect some fireworks. Uh, I expect over. You kind of you know, walked me into that from a, a year ago. Fifty-five as well. and a half. And so that's right. It, it should be a should be a fantastic game. You bring up Shipley. That's where I think the biggest um, advantages for Clemson is is running the ball. Run the ball. Control the clock. Shipley is your best playmaker anyway. Get him the right. rock. And challenge Wake. You know where if you can have the ball for five minutes, have some of these long drives, and Wake can't then Wake's defense is out here gassed. I think right. that's a con- that's a concern I have for Wake Forest. I do think this place will be packed. I don't think it helps Wake that it's a noon. I always right. think it helps the away team that it's a noon game. Right. Yeah, I, I agree with you. It is interesting to think about, you know, the travel aspect. A, a travel team has to get up earlier. The home team's there. It, it'll be interesting to see. You bring up being at pack. What is your over-under on KJ getting 30 <laughs> tickets that he needs? Oh, Are easy. You- I thought 30 was kind of low. I think he's going to get like 50. What? Well, okay, getting tickets. 30 tickets, I think he'll get the 30 tickets, but in terms of, like, Henry's in the building, you know, like, <laughs> family and everything, I think he'll have a bunch of people there. Breaking news, there will be over 50 Henry's in attendance that's, for That's Facebook. my prediction. That's my prediction. We, we, need, we need to hit up KJ next Monday and get a true number count. Yes. This will be, this will be fascinating. It really makes me reflect on my time of trying to get tickets. Listen, oh, yeah. my senior year, I had a deal – with some of the guys on the team where they gave me four tickets every week. There was brothers. Really? Now, I'll just tell you, it was the Davis twins, Judah and JD. Okay. So they they had eight tickets every game. I'm sure the judge got tickets being a staff right. member, so they were good, right? So I promised them, hey, guys, if you give me two each, four, however you want to split it, I will give you my bowl gift at the end of the year, whatever it is. Wow. And a lot of the times – for Clemson, you know, we got to go to the bigger bowl games. We got to go to a suite. So it was a really impactful. It was a good trade. So we go to the Orange Bowl, and I'm basically giving them $500 plus worth of gifts. <laughs> then we go to the Natty, and I give them gifts again because I'm a man of my word. Oh, And my I God. do that thing. But it worked out. I had a ton of tickets every game, which was fantastic for that's me. That's how you barter. I mean, that's, yeah. that's smart, Mac. I see what you did there. I just, you know, I'm, I, I just, I'm a wheel and dealing machine over here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, anyway, thanks for tuning in. Another great episode. Graham Lincoln, Mac Lane. Big shout out uh, to KJ Henry for joining us. Ross Taylor for helping make it happen. Uh, can't ever do it without those guys. Really appreciate them. If you don't have Sirius XM, what are you doing? Go get it. Pick up the phone. Write them a letter. Go knock on their door, as Kelly Gramlich would like to do. Make sure you get that thing on your phone, in your car. But we also need you to go over to YouTube. Subscribe to our channel. Yes. We're seeing unbelievable growth and following and love from you guys on there. Also go over to Apple Podcasts, the OG. Uh, rate, review, subscribe. Always great to hear from you guys. But until next time, we'll see you all.